Hi, my name is Luke Benick and I'm here with 3Helix and in this short video I want to talk to you guys about visualizing enzymatic tissue remodeling with the collagen hybridizing peptide. And Before we get started I'll give you a few background slides uh, talking about collagen and the collagen hybridizing peptides. So the collagen fibers are actually based on a hierarchical organization structure where you have the collagen fiber made up of these smaller fibrils which are made up of the collagen triple helical molecules. Now, the triple helices are actually made up of these smaller alpha chains. And you can think of this as kind of like a rope and having formed by three individual pieces of twine. When you have three pieces of twine, they come together and this rope-like structure is much more strong and stable than each individual strand by itself. So in nature, you have a very nice triple helical formation for collagen molecule. But when it gets damaged, either by mechanical overloading or, in this case, enzymatic action, the triple helix can become unstable and it will begin to unfold and unwind. Now, this is important because this is how our collagen hybridizing peptide can actually locate and target regions of damaged collagen. So our collagen hybridizing peptide, or CHP, is based on a repeating sequence of glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline. Now this specific sequence has a very high propensity to refold into a collagen triple helix. And I'll explain what I mean here. So here we have a nice collagen fiber and it gets degraded by a very specific family of enzymes known as matrix metalloproteinases that can go in and cleave the triple helical molecule and this exposes individual single-stranded collagen um, strands. Now our CHPs can actually go in and reform uh, the collagen triple helix with these strands. So what we did is we attach fluorescent molecules and biotin onto our CHPs and then when we apply them to tissue stains it actually refolds and hybridizes into a triple helix with these individual uh, collagen strands. So going back to the first example we have a nice intact triple helix it becomes damaged it begins to unwind. Now we have a much smaller peptide sequence with a fluorescent probe on it and it can go in and refold into that triple helix and you can read this fluorescence for staining. Now you can think of this as a way uh, in a way that's similar to DNA primers binding to the DNA sequence during PCR where you have the much smaller primers going in and hybridizing or binding with the much longer DNA strands. So in this example I wanted to talk about how enzymatic degradation can occur over time. So osteoarthritis is a joint disease that's characterized by wear and tear. Um, however, it's more of a full joint disease that affects the ligaments, the cartilage, as well as the bone. So in this first example, uh, we compare CHP staining with saffron O staining. So on the right hand side, we see a healthy tissue and on the left hand side, we see an osteoarthritic tissue. And as you can see with saffron O, both in the healthy and the normal, you still get a nice blue area and a nice uh, amount of pink in the lower areas. However, with the CHP, when you look at the healthy tissue, you get almost no signal intensity or very low signal intensity, but when you compare it to the osteoarthritis uh, sample, you see lots of CHP staining indicating that there's a lot of collagen turnover and that there's a lot of collagen damage due to the wear and tear of the joints um, you know, your knuckles, your knees, that is actually damaging the ligaments and the cartilage within those joints. And our CHPs, like I said before, target this unwound denatured collagen. So in a healthy model, most of the collagen is in a triple helical form, and when it begins to damage and unwind, that's really when you see a very distinct difference with CHP staining that you may not see with saffron O unless you have a trained eye. Another example I wanted to talk to you about was skin damage and skin aging. So let's focus here on this left hand side. What we did are these are ex vivo models and we had an unstressed skin sample and then we had three other stressed skin samples. Now the collagen CHP stain here is in red and this teal color is uh, for staining cell nuclei. So as you can see in a healthy unstressed model you see a basal level of collagen remodeling. It is skin. It has a high content of collagen and remodeling going on. However, when you start to damage it using UV light, you see an increase of CHP staining as indicated by the higher levels of this red fluorescence. So we are able to target the damaged collagen 
due to sun exposure or UV exposure in this example, um, which as you continue to grow and continue to age, your body is exposed to more and more sunlight, causing more and more damage. Uh, just another example of this is in this right hand side we have a mouse skin tissue. We have a nine month old mouse and we compared it to a three week old mouse. As you can see the CHP stain is in yellow. Um, the nine month old mouse has a much higher level of collagen remodeling in its skin when compared to a very young three week old mouse. And these mice were not um, exposed to sunlight. This is just due to the natural aging and your body not being able to um, repair collagen and repair your skin as quickly. So in conclusion, we've shown that CHPs can target regions of collagen that have been enzymatically degraded. CHPs can be used to visualize differences caused by natural aging in the skin model. Um, however, we believe that this can also be used elsewhere such as bone weakening due to aging and osteoporosis. If you have any other questions, again, my name is Luke Benick, so feel free to contact me here. And I wanted to introduce to you uh, other members of our team that you'll probably be in contact with. If you need to order any CHPs, you'll be in contact with Helen Kang. Um, and if you have any new applications or if, um, you have new ideas, we're always welcome and we always want to hear from you. So please contact our business development, Dr. Mike Kirkness. Um, and then there's also several other videos that go over CHP's application for other types of tissues and other types of diseases. So feel free to check those out on our website as well. Thank you.